Hi everyone, we're back with part two of this series, which is me colouring some different textures on this illustration sheet by Agatha Pop Illustration. I'll leave the link in the description for you to go and buy that from Etsy if you wish to. So last time we coloured this weathered watering can, which didn't turn out as brilliantly as I'd hoped in my head <laughs> but it's still nice I still like it it's very vintage looking and a little bit rough around the edges which is what I was going for so as you can see since the last video I have completed colouring the page um, all the different elements of the page that we don't need to do on camera because as I mentioned before we're just doing certain textures and materials that I've decided to show you how to do so we did the weathered metal then we've also got the um, the bird box, the wooden bird box to do. I'm going to be doing a rusted mailbox, so rusted red kind of colour. We've got wicker to do, we've got terracotta and then we've got glass, which is what I'm going to do today. So I thought I would colour everything else off camera. One, because it's easier for me to do that. I can sit on my settee and colour it and I don't have to think about getting on camera and sitting at my desk and, and talking through it. So... Basically, the rest of it is just flowers. So you know how to colour flowers. You've seen me do that so many times. I didn't feel like I really needed to do the entire thing on camera. So yes, we are going to be going to do the glass today. Now, I coloured from this book by Hannah Carlson, this illustration here, a few weeks ago. And everyone was asking me how I did the glass. Now, to me, it looks fine, but it's not a hyper-realistic glass jar colouring to me. I'm not, that's not my skill level. What I do is I use one colour and loads of white gel pen. <laughs> and that's what comes out. So that's what I'm going to show you today is how I achieve this kind of look of glass. Like I say, it's not hyper realistic, but it's it's quite cartoony and it still looks like glass at the end of the day. You know what, what it is when you look at it. So that's the main thing. So um, the one colour that I use to colour glass... Now, it doesn't have to be this one, but this is the one that I'm going to use today, is Blue Slate from Prismacolor. And um, if you don't have Prismacolors, don't worry about it. We're going to try and colour match this to a few different brands so that you can see what you've got. But if not, it is this very pale, slightly desaturated blue. Um, it's quite warm in tone. It has a bit of purple in there. Um, so... Yes, let's just get on with it. <laughs> so I'm going to look through my colour charts book. This is something that I made myself. Um, it's not something that I offer as a physical product to buy from me. Um, it would just be too much in the terms of logistics and printing and shipping and all that. And I just, I'd get overwhelmed. But you can, if you want to, go and get all of the charts that are featured in this book for free on the link in my description. I've created all these charts from scratch, so... I can give you permission to download them for free and fill them in, whatever you want. So that's absolutely fine. So uh, let's see, first of all, where the blue slate sits on the Prismacolor family chart. So blue slate is over here. As you can see, it's these very warm, but not uh, very vibrant blues. So they're, they're quite desaturated and it sits between the powder blue and the Caribbean sea. And then it's kind of darkest iteration or deepest iteration is the slate grey. So it does have grey undertones. It also, like I said, is quite warm. So I feel like there is some red, some purpley kind of colours in there. Um, it's definitely not what I would call a green blue, which is sort of more over here with the peacocks, the muted turquoise. So that might give you a little bit of an idea. If we go through some of the other family charts, we can try and match as best as possible to see what you've got in your collection to use. So I've got the card here. Might be easier if I take it out of this. Uh, there we go. And let's try and match it up a little bit. So the polychromos are quite vibrant colours. They're quite bold, they're quite dark. So it can be difficult sometimes to find yourself a match in the polychromos. But just looking at this very quickly, it definitely has an ultramarine vibe about it. So I would say if you're using polychromos, go for this sky blue colour. I don't think there's anything else on there that really matches up. Um, so yeah, definitely the sky blue. If you are using Holbein, we have a little bit more of a range here. 
I'm floating straight away over to this family, which is the uh, Lavender Blue and Forget Me Not Blue. You could probably use either of those. I think, as I'm looking at, as I'm looking at them here, I think the Lavender uh, Blue is probably the closest match, but you could use either of those colours, Forget Me Not or Lavender. Uh, let's have a look in the Artex. So the Artex are very, very similar to Prismacolor. They even have some of the same names. So we should definitely have a match here. Um, I say definitely. There's not anything that is making me think it's immediately a match for Blue Slate. If I were using this particular pencil set and I wanted to colour glass, I would probably find myself going towards the Pastel Blue or maybe even the cloud blue, but used quite lightly. I wouldn't want to get the full saturation of that. I think it would be too dark. Maybe in shadowed areas, if you decided to uh, make it look a little bit more <clears throat> contrasted, so your glass looked a bit, you know, a, a bit more realistic, you could go with that. But I would go with probably the pastel blue and maybe a hint of the cloud blue, just to darken that, because that is quite light. So probably those two together. If you are using the luminance, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's probably going to have to be the light cobalt blue. Again, it's not a perfect match, but it is quite close in terms of the colour and the family. I don't know if I've got any more. Oh, yeah, we've got the Black Widows. So the Black Widows have 180 pencils, so I'm thinking we should have more options here. Not always the case though. So I'm drawn to Picasso Sky, but that does have quite a lot of purple in it, more so than the blue slate. It would still work. And it might be that that is the best um, option for the Black Widows. I think it is. Yeah, so we'll stick with Picasso Sky. Anything that's not a bright royal blue, has a little bit of gray in it and uh, no green in it, should work for glass. Um, Starjoy Gold. Let's have a look. Uh, so, I'd say early morning sky, even though it is quite blue, if you use that lightly, it would work. Baby blue might work as well. Um, and possibly brigantine. Again, that would be for your darker areas if you were going to deepen the shadows. But I think that they are the three closest matches. All right, so... Let's get on with the actual colouring. Uh, we'll zoom in and move this across. There we are. Okay, so I've got my blue slate pencil here. I'm gonna give it a quick sharpen. And like I said, you will need a, a paint pen or a gel pen, something like that, because that is what creates the majority of the look of glass. This is really just it's just a layer that I put down to, to make it look like glass. And I don't really know why it does. It's just, it just does. <laughs> that was a great explanation, Claire. So here's what we'll do. We will start by colouring a few millimetres away from the edge of the line art. That's on the inner edge, a few millimetres away. So we're not going right up to the edge. And we're doing it quite lightly. You can see that we are leaving a white gap between the line art and where we're colouring. Okay, so you just keep doing that all the way down on this left-hand side. This is a really easy technique and it almost feels too easy <laughs> to, um, to do a tutorial for. But then again, you know, people, people commented on the Hannah Carlson illustration that I coloured saying how amazing it looked so clearly, even though it's a simple way of doing things, it's effective, which is what we're all about at Colour of Claire. Uh, simple but effective, nothing scary or difficult here. I don't like things that are too intricate and I don't like to gatekeep things, you know, how to do art and things like that. I think it should be very simple, very accessible to everybody. Uh, another reason why the charts are free uh, should be accessible to absolutely everybody, not only those who can afford it. That's just my way of seeing things. Uh, but the same again with, with art in general. It should be, I, I like 
things that are easy, easy to create, easy to achieve, and they give you a quick payoff. You know, they give you that hit of dopamine that you've you've managed to to create something that looks really good, but it hasn't taken, you know, three years in art school. Clearly. <laughs> so I've kept that line all the way down with that gap. And I am sort of softly blending it out towards the centre of the uh, object. And when I say blending it out, I'm just lightening my pressure on the pencil. So you can see that we have a darker area right at the edge. And then it slowly gradients out towards the lighter bit. And, and there's none here at all, barely. You're barely touching the paper. <clears throat> and then the same on the other side. So this is quite handy because the illustrator has kind of given us the edge here of the bottom of the jar. So you can use that as your guideline as to where you start to colour and that keeps the edge around the edge. <laughs> but keeping that, that edge clear, it does give a look of three dimension. I don't know how, I can't explain it to you, um, but it just does. Uh, it's the same kind of when you're trying to colour any rounded object, I wouldn't colour right to the edge all the way round. You can do it in some areas to create variation, like say if you're colouring a sphere, um, you would have a really dark edge uh, towards the back, um, but there still might be that little bit of light reflection at the bottom. It, it's it's always best just to leave a bit of an edge, I find. It, it makes it, it gives it something. I don't know what, but it does. So that is why we aren't colouring right to the edge. I wish I could explain it to you in more artsy-fartsy terms. But I don't have that, <laughs> that knowledge, or at least I don't have it in my brain right now. I probably know why, but it's disappeared. So this is a super easy way of creating the look of glass. I wouldn't say it's how to colour glass, but it's it does a decent enough job. But just make sure you're getting that fade going. We don't want it to look like it's actually a blue jar. We want it to look like these are obviously um, reflections. So once you have done the edges, I will probably say just do a little bit down here, but right in the middle. So between the bottom of your the green colouring and then the edge, try and do a little bit in the middle. You'll need quite a sharp pencil. It's probably not sharp enough actually, because it looks a bit blurred, but I deepen it might be a bit better. Uh, and then I would say just underneath the rim, mm. a little bit more, and some coming down as well. Sort of following a curve. You don't want to do a complete straight line because it is a curved jar. So just adding a little bit of the blue. Maybe deepening it just slightly in the centre of that swatch that you've just done. Again, to show like um, a blend to white that goes around the edge so that it's just a bit darker in the centre. But it does blend out to white. And that will just give us a little bit of a little bit of the look of the back of the jar. Because we can't do anything over the top of these flowers with this pencil. It's not gonna it's not gonna look right, it's not gonna work, it's probably not opaque enough to go over the flowers. Um and it wouldn't look right anyway. Mm. So we just do around the flowers. And then on the actual rim of the jar, you can really you can do what you want to be honest. I'm gonna put a little bit of the blue here, maybe a little bit here. I think as long as you're leaving plenty of white, it doesn't so much matter where the position of your blue is. It's just to show that 
it is a, a transparent thing that we're colouring, but it just has this slight bit of reflections here and there. And instead of leaving it the white of the paper, we're giving it a little bit of dimension. So it doesn't matter too much where you actually put them. I mean, if you're going to do it properly, obviously it would. There'll be places of natural shadow, etc. But this is fine. I might just do a little line right up against the edge. A very little line because we still want to keep that whiteness. So again, just you need a really sharp pencil. Just a little bit of the colour on the edge, not a lot. Just so it softens the edges a little bit and you've, you've got room for that white again. So the white spaces really do matter and it's creating a few white spaces. So I might just do a little bit here, just a shadow, a little bit around these flower petals and again just vary your pressure now that is quite a lot of blue um but if you look back at this you can see i did use quite a lot of blue uh did still leave some white but it's absolutely fine when we add the the paint pen or the white gel pen or the white acrylic or whatever it is that you are using ink um that makes all the difference so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint pen or gel pen and we're going to start about here. So I would say, what, about a centimetre from the edge. And then we're going to follow the natural curve of the jar. So it curves out like this and then it goes in. And we're going to thicken that up and fill it in. like that and again there's there's no real rhyme or reason to this <laughs> this is the way I do it but you can sort of put your white anywhere just like you can put your blue anywhere it's the overall look of it that's going to convince people that it's glass it doesn't really matter too much where you put these so it's all about alternating the colour and the white as well. So you can see we did a little bit of colour on the edge, then there's white, then there's colour, and now I'm doing the white line. Um, as long as you're kind of alternating, that's going to give you the look. So put a little bit here where we've got blue next to us. Putting white on white is going to make no difference. I might thicken this bit up a little bit, still keeping the the curve go in. I might even let this branch off into two. How does that look? Make one a bit longer than the other for variation. Maybe just bring this up a little bit. Um, and then, like I said, just put them anywhere you want. So as long as you're following the, the curve of the shape, it doesn't matter. Now, I always go a bit crazy with white pen. You'll know if you've been watching the channel for a long time. I'm a bit of a white pen fiend. <laughs> and I end up putting bits of white everywhere and probably overdoing it. So it's up to you with how much you want to use. I'm going to do a line across here. Just extend it a little bit. And you can also put bits that have broken off as well, so there can be a gap between your highlights. I'm going to try and make that look a little bit more curved though. See, I probably could have done this, this white line, a little bit more carefully because I like to try and keep the same amount of space. So you see the green underneath. I put the line at a kind of tilt and that, that was meaning that the green was quite narrow over here, but then it was going large over here and it didn't follow the curve. But now we've created a more of a harsh angle than I want. So that's where I will bring in a sharp colourless blender pencil. I think we did this on the last video with the watering can. Actually, I'll leave that for a second to dry because it's easier when it's dry and I will 
sort that out, I will scrape a little bit off and reshape it. Um, where should I put some more lines? Let's put a few here. And maybe another one just alongside here. Very fine line. So var variations on the thickness as well. And maybe, maybe a little one here. kind of curves up. Again, I probably go too far when it comes to adding white. So do it to your own personal, what you think looks best. You can also add a few kind of dotty things that come off. Might be better if I did that where there's more colour on the background, but a few little dotty bits that come off the end. Um, and then here on the, the rim, you can just add little bits into the blue. And that is pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to use that scraper, I'll call it a scraper, uh, to just reshape this now that it's dry and make that curve a little bit better. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still croaky even after this few weeks of having the um, the chestiness. Still croaky. So that's practically it. <laughs> you can, like I say, just keep adding bits of white. You don't have to add as many. Um, it might be an idea to just do some very like hair, hair. What's the word? Hair thinness. No, hairline lines. <laughs> really, really thin ones because the variation matters too. Um, and you can put them anywhere really. I usually just put them right next to a thicker line. Very, very light. Something like that. And you end up with something that looks kind of like glass. <laughs> I really hope that that has helped um, anybody that is struggling to of where to begin on colouring glass. Obviously, it's not an advanced tutorial by any means, but it is a pretty good beginner's way to do it with just one pencil and a white pen. So I'm going to zoom out so that we can see the whole lot. Sometimes that helps. Um, Am I on the right zoom? One second. There we go. Uh, so that you can see it sort of from further away. And yeah, I think it's quite nice. It gives it that effect and that's what we're after. So next time we're going to be doing either the terracotta, the wood, the wicker or the rusted metal. You can leave a comment below of which one you would like to see next. It's I'll leave it in your hands. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for watching today and I will see you very soon on Colour with Claire.